I just know I want to be places where I'm celebrated uh, and not just tolerated or, or, or just, um, you know, kind of dealt with in a way that doesn't make me feel respected. Um, and there were times throughout this process when I was in Brooklyn where I felt very disrespected and my talent, uh, I work extremely hard at what I do. No one ever talks about my work ethic though. Everyone talks about what I'm doing off the floor. So uh, I just want to change that narrative and write my own story and just continue to prepare in the gym. And now that I'm in Dallas, just focus on what I can control, like I said. And, um, you know, I'm always going to be close with those guys in Brooklyn, just like I'm close with guys in Boston, just like I'm close to guys in Cleveland. Um, you know, it is a team competitive sport, but we care about each other's families way more off the court. So um, I know those ex the relationships will extend off. I mean, I'm just focused on preparing to win. You know, we we came together in about 2018, 19, uh, kind of when that finals happened, and we weren't coming together to plan what team we were going to, but uh, we just had goals together, and it wasn't just as a duo. We, we were uh, seeing ourselves as savants in the culture that we wanted to teach the youngins, and if we got some young guys that were willing to sacrifice and buy into what we got going on, then we were going to flourish, we felt. Uh, but it just didn't work out, and we still remain brothers. But it is a business at the end of the day, as we always say, and we gotta look out for my family. And ultimately, I wanna be at peace every time I come into work, rather than things hanging over my head or, or wondering what people think about me in the building or whether or not a report's gonna come out tomorrow that I don't talk to my teammates, which is untrue. And then, you know, I just felt like being in New York City and the media capital of the world, there was so many things that leaked out that I didn't even know where they came from. And I'm answering things that I don't deserve. And ultimately, I don't pay attention to that much. So I'm um, just grateful for that. Got to move on now here. What did you feel like the Nets did that was disrespectful to you? Uh, I think that's another uh, day where I could really go into detail about it. I, I'm not the person to really speak on names and go to someone behind their back and, and try to leak stuff to the media. That's never been me. Um, now, I've been an audience member of watching people say things about me um, that ultimately just fall off my shoulder. Uh, I'm really uh, in a place that I, I'm grateful that I got to grow, I got to grow into uh, over the last year and a half, two years, uh, spending time away from the, ba the basketball court, gave me time to really appreciate life in a new way. And um, I just know I need healthy boundaries, especially in this entertainment business. There's a lot of disrespect that goes on with people's families, with their names, and I, I'm just not with it. Uh, so it's not personal against any of those guys against in the front, front office. It's just what I'm willing to accept. Um, and I took a chance. and. Luckily and fortunately, the Dallas Mavericks picked me up, so it's just all what I can control. I'm grateful for the opportunity, um, but I think you heard in this interview, like as much as the what ifs, I would love to focus on and, and cherish, and you know the what, like what could have been or what should be. Uh, I have to shift my shift my focus to what we have going on here, um, and that's that's what brings me peace. Is just taking care of what I can control in here and, and really embracing my teammates and being one of the leaders on our team alongside the coaching staff in the front office of, of just exemplifying what greatness looks like. And that's just worrying about the work, you know, chopping wood and carrying water. Like I tweeted the other day, it's just the same thing every day and just growing as a human being. So I think uh, to not talk too much here, but me and Brian have grown as human beings. And uh, it's always gonna be my brother, always gonna have great things to say about him and his family. Uh, but my focus is here. So uh, unfortunately, uh, Lakers, they're doing what they're doing. And that's, that's it. Uh, well, it's not the first time we'll be uh, compet in competition as brothers. Um, you know, I'm just praying for his happiness and praying for his well-being. Uh, we had a lot of conversations throughout the year of, um, you know, what our futures were going to look like. There was still a level of uncertainty. Uh, but we just cared about seeing each other be places that uh, we can thrive. And whether that be together or whether that be apart, there's never been one moment where I felt like, um, he's been angry at me for decisions I've made or I've been angry at him. Um, we've just tried to understand each other a lot better and um, grow as human beings, grow as brothers. Um, you know, his business changes so quickly. Um, he's getting a little bit older. I'm getting a little bit older. I just love the competition now that we can be in the same conference, and, and I welcome all that. You know, get to see him a little bit more, probably playing against Phoenix a lot more, and um, that's what I'm looking forward to. Everything else in, in between, I, I just am glad that uh, he got out of there. Nah, I think it, this was in the works like after year one. I was unsure about whether or not I wanted to be in Brooklyn long term again because of things that was happening behind the scenes. I, I just um, did my best to put my head down and uh, work as hard as I could. There were some unfortunate circumstances that came up there that were out of my control, um, whether it be the mandate with the vaccine or um, missing games being suspended or, you know, just little things that I think 
um, you know, just put um, just wrenches in our in our journey. You know, and then we had James, and we were supposed to be the super team. Like, I, I think uh, I would like to say something, too, about the super team of me, James, and KD that everyone thinks should have worked. Uh, we played very limited time together, and there were a lot of injuries and things that took place, and I would have liked to see that work for the long term. But um, there are no mistakes, no coincidences, and we've got to move forward. But um, I'm happy that I could look back on that journey and reflect and say I learned a lot of things from those guys and my teammates in Brooklyn um, and just my journey throughout this. <laughs> Yeah, no, I just think Luke has been playing professionally for so long that he's seen you know, almost every defense. You know, when I was his age at 16 years old, I wasn't playing professionally. You know, so his his uh, childhood of growing up within this professional game has been different than others. And to see his success at such a young age, I'm not really surprised, sort of say, because um, I know a lot of hard work goes on behind that. And for me to be a, a part of a team, you know, his team, like it's it's just. Um, it just makes sense, and, and it's just we can flow into things that uh, you know I don't think we even necessarily have to talk about. It's just being with another special player on the court and having fun out there. Um, in terms of our team aspect and and, and what we can build, um, you know, the poise that's most important. Just the poise. Just just don't um, overthink anything and and just have fun. Yeah, no, I think it's just going to be spread out. Uh, but obviously, when Luca's in that first quarter, he leads the league in first quarter scoring. So we know he's going to be ultra aggressive. And uh, throughout the game, I, I just try to, um, I don't want to say pace myself, but just try to read the game at a very high level and let the um, let the defense make mistakes first and then try to in, impose my will when needed. Um, when we got a few possessions that were bad or a few turnovers, um, got a few post-ups, slowed the game down, uh, and just waited for... Uh, different options to open up so we stay patient yeah I was I was in my room I, I, I it was kind of weird because it was right across the street <laughs> you know while, while history is taking place so uh, I'm over here telling my friends like we're we're literally in within <laughs> you know feet of history but we're not in the building uh but all in all I just enjoy seeing him um you know, celebrate himself uh, in, in those moments where a lot of hard work that doesn't necessarily get talked about or seen by others uh, is on full display. And I got a chance to play three special years with him. Um, so it's it's a celebration from me and my family to him and to witness history like that within the game that's so special to all of us in this room and, got, and people all around the world. Um, we should acknowledge when greatness is in front of us. And I know we have all the superlatives for LeBron and, you know, you got the stands on one side and you got the, the real supporters on one side. So I think it's just great for the game that uh, we can all come together collectively to celebrate somebody accomplishing something like that. No, nah, no, nah, but I, I mean, it's pretty easy to tell what he was going after <laughs> playing with him. Uh, and that's when I felt like we were at our best when he was aggressive like that. And I'm glad that he can um, put some of the haters to rest saying that he's not one of the greatest scorers or if not the greatest scorer of all time. Um, the stats prove it. Yeah. Yeah, no, nah, just selfless basketball out there, playing the right way. Uh, I was telling the guys in the locker room, I just like how we didn't panic in those last four minutes. Uh, we stayed poised, and they made their, their runs, but we made everything tough. Um, it just felt good to get this debut out of the way. Um, just been a long 96 hours, barely any sleep sometimes, and um, just packing my stuff up. It was the first time I ever got traded in the middle of the season, so it was new for me. Um, but I I'm excited that I'm here, and uh, just keep things rolling now. Uh, I think just our approach, um, you know, we were going to make mistakes anyway tonight. Uh, so the first game, I just wanted to make sure, and I think my teammates wanted to make sure, the coach staff wanted to make sure that just we didn't feel any pressure. Uh, and, and I think the, the most important thing that we stressed as a team was just don't force the ball to me. <laughs> you know, we uh, talked about that as a squad where, you know, we just want to play natural basketball. Um, you know, I always have to come to me. You know, you could play off me. I could play off the ball. I can cut. So they're just getting used to playing with me and um, just seeing how many open shots I can create for them and the double teams that are coming. So our rotations are just getting better. And then I'm sure when number 77 gets back, uh, it'll be even more enjoyable to see and uh, play out there. Yeah, no, I, I, I love playing off the ball. I love playing with the ball in my hands. Uh, when uh, a few of my teammates uh, can alleviate me uh, of those duties, it feels good. Uh, just getting to my spot and uh, knowing that the defensive uh, mentality of other team is just be aggressive, get the ball out of my hands that time. So I was just trying to beat the traps and just make smart plays, smart decisions. Uh, luckily, it went our way this night, tonight. Yeah, I've had nothing but good things to say, great things to say about the Dallas Mavericks, even when we played them early in the season. Um, you know, this is a, a well-coached team. Um, you know, they've had some success in the past, and uh, this is a well-run organization. So uh, for me, they just... 
told me to just be myself and just come in and play basketball at a high level. So it's pretty easy. Yeah, I know we're going to get that question asked often, <laughs> you know, just what, what can we accomplish? And I just want to take it one day at a time. That's, that's all we can control, man. Just get everybody healthy, um, get everybody focused and, and staying on course. Uh, it's 2023 in the NBA. I don't think any 20 point lead is safe, <laughs> you know, as opposed to maybe eight years ago, 10 years ago, where the game would kind of be done and guys would just be going up and down. There wasn't as much scoring, but it's so many high scoring guys in our league. So many guys that get to the free throw line, you never know what can happen. So whether up 19 or whether up 15 or 25, I just know that in this league, no lead is safe. Um, teams are going to make runs. We're playing against the best players in the world. So, uh, the key is not to panic and just stay poised. And that's, I feel like we did that as often as we could when um, the game looked like it could go either way. Just natural nerves, natural nerves. I was talking to my wife after the game, and she was just asking me, are you okay? Are you good? Uh, she could tell in my face that uh, you know, I had just had a lot of emotions going on. I do my best to not hide them, but just flow through them you know, throughout the game. I just don't want to be distracted by uh, how big the moment is or what I think uh, my uh, game will be like that night. I just want to hoop and... Just be out there having fun. It's been four hours, man. He just he just popped into the locker room. Uh, again, there's no pressure like for us to sit down and chop it up all the time. Like we've been, I've been in this business for 12 years now, 11 years now. Um, you know, when I see somebody that has uh, that special talent, you know, you just got to get to know him first. I don't want to force anything on him or try to, you know, do anything that is out of my norm. Uh, I think just a lot of sparring sessions I had in the summertime playing with different teammates as well. I played with a few guys, um, you know, this summer that uh, really helped acclimate me to any role that I potentially can see. And this was, you know, when I was getting ready to play for the Nets. So now that I'm, I'm traded here, uh, it's just seamless. Uh, I'm a coach's son. My dad was my coach for four years before I went into the AU circuit. So he, he taught me a lot about the little nuances of the game and, and just playing with other special talents and how much of uh, – a respect you garner when you can just go out on the court and really make it look easy with guys that you barely know, right, per se. But, um, you know, I think a few people, if they do research in this room, Reggie Bullock is the same high school class as me. Um, Timmy Hardaway Jr., I've been seeing him in Miami since he was in high school. Christian Wood, I, I knew in the summertime just playing with him. So uh, Theo being in Brooklyn, we have familiar relationships is what I'm saying. It's just putting the ball in the hoop and getting defensive stops um, is the simple ingredients um, that we focus on. Everything else will handle it. So. I, I believe that is on the way, I, I, the age limit. Um, I, I think it's going to be one heck of a historical moment when we, let me say we, <laughs> when we get uh, one of our ladies drafted at 18, 19 years old, and maybe even 17 years old. I, I don't know what it, when it's going to change per se, uh, but I'm definitely one of the guys pushing for it behind the scenes. I think our ladies, just like everyone else, should have access to their dream a lot sooner. Um, the NCAA has their own thing going on, but um, if you can get to the W and be living out your dream every single day and getting better, I, I don't see why not. As long as you have a great uh, group of people around you that support you unconditionally, anything's possible. Um, but there are definitely plans in the future that I have with our ladies. I'm always working. I'm always crafting, always just uh, consulting and just being selfless in my approach. Um, this is passed on for me from my sister. Now I have my daughter. You know, I have plenty of queens around me that I have to take care of. So it's my responsibility and my duty to stand up for them and um, be there regardless of what they need and, and uh, speak up. So they do the same for me. So it's equal.